Well, all right. Well, let's get into this. We're starting a new series today. Uh, I'm excited about it. I was ready to go with um, certain specific things that we're going to talk about in this series. But as I thought about it and prayed about it a little bit more, I felt like I needed to give a sort of introductory type of series starter today. So that is what we're going to do. When I was about eight years old, eight-ish years old, maybe nine, I can't remember exactly, this is when this happened to me. My brother, my older brother, was in the living room and he was arguing with my mom about whether or not the weather was too bad for him to go out or not, right? So my, my brother was, you know, driving and he was ready to go out and see some friends or he was wanting to go on a date or something. But I just remember them arguing and my mom saying, no, 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 it looks terrible out there. The, the weather is terrible. You can't go out. Now, in Louisiana, we wouldn't have been talking about some big snowstorm or anything like that. It would have been something along the lines of a massive thunderstorm, electrical storm, possibility of tornadoes, all that kind of stuff. That's the real thing going on in the south down there. But anyway, uh, when they were arguing, I was in one room and I just suddenly heard all at once the front door, boom, slammed. And it wasn't my brother leaving. It wasn't anybody getting mad. The front door slammed and the lights went out in my house. Then I heard the whir, and I heard the sound of the wind, and something that sounded a bit like a freight train that was about to run over our house, and quickly, and out of the blue, I mean, this happened so fast, my mom suddenly was racing into the hallway, and she was saying, get into the bathroom, get into the bathroom, and so my other little brother and me and my little sister were all in the bathroom, and she threw a blanket over our head, and my brother, my older brother, he had the old way of understanding when a tornado was coming in, there used to be the thinking, you know, open up some windows to let your house breathe a little bit. Well, you don't say that anymore now because those windows can shatter and break all over you. But he was lifting windows that had been painted shut for years, man. He was running, whoa, whoa, and everything was going in chaotic mode. And uh, I was lying there under that, not sure what was happening. I was down. I started praying. I was freaking out. It was my first real tornado. And then I heard my mom say, the tree out front is down. Well, we had a huge tree in our front yard. She said, the tree out front is down, and I knew we were in trouble, man. And so I sat there shivering underneath that blanket. It was the first real time in my young life that I realized that I lived in a very uncertain, scary world. And I was terrified, frankly. And filled with that fear and filled with that uncertainty, I just I didn't know what was going to happen next. Is this it? Is this the end? Have I experienced all there is? What is next? Well, I made it. So, uh, <laughs> Uncle Billy, go out. I'm doing this. Yes, your Uncle Billy is still alive and well and with us. Well, I don't know if he's friends. well, but he's with us. How about that? <laughs> well, hey, listen, one of the things that almost everyone deals with at one time or another is uncertainty. It's not knowing what is happening next. Sometimes that uncertainty can come about because of a crisis that comes about. A sudden change in your life that you weren't expecting. An emergency. Someone is hurt. Something happens. Or like <laughs> with me, you're in a tornado or something scary like that. Maybe it is a death in your family. Maybe it's an unexpected something that has happened. And it scares you and it frightens you and it, it just makes you think, I don't know what is happening next. I don't know what to do next. All of us experience that on one level or another, but it might also simply be you're at a point where you're not sure what to do next. And maybe you're not uh, in the middle of a big crisis, you're just at a point of decision and you're looking around and you're thinking about the world that you're in and you're thinking about the relationships that you have and you're thinking about your job and your family and all of that and you're just not sure what to do next. And even though we might not call it fear, uncertainty about what to do next does grip our heart a bit no matter what kind of panic situation you're in or calm situation you're in and it is a form of fear now it can be paralyzing it can bring great anxiety it can grow in your hearts and minds as a fear of the future a fear of the unknown so what's going to happen to me you might ask yourself uh, what do i need to do where is god in all of this and how can he help me well over the next several weeks uh, we are going to be talking about uncertainty what to do 
when uh, you don't know what to do next, right? When, when life changes or where you're facing uncertainty and, and how to deal with that. And we're going to talk about five different words that I'm going to share with you. Uh, not today. Mm -hmm. uh, tune in. <laughs> tune in next time. We'll start with the first one. And we're going to talk about uh, seven, maybe eight people. It just depends on how that last one comes about. But, but about seven different people from Scripture who will provide some definitive or rather definite approaches for us when we have to deal with uncertainty. Five words, seven people for when you don't know what is next. But today, as an introduction to this series, and I will talk quickly, I'm going to dive into that foundational idea of the fear of the unknown. And I want us to see how God speaks to uncertainty. But first, let's pray together. Lord, thank you that uh, when all else is uncertain, you are certain certainly with us here today. So God, we uh, pray that you would soften our hearts, uh, that you would open our ears, uh, help us to hear from your word today, let it just cut into the depths of us, give us uh, pain where we need it, and strength where we need it, and healing where we need it. But Lord, we pray that you would just speak to us through your word today. We pray these things together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so quickly, let's look at what we can do when we are facing uncertainty, when we're facing un the unknown, right? The first is just simply this, and that is to put your fear into perspective. Put your fear into perspective. Fear is a very slippery thing. In order for it to have a good handle on it, it's very important for us to actually look at what it is that we are afraid of. I think I've told you guys before uh, about uh, my mother-in-law, one of the most hilarious most hilarious people I've ever met, uh, and um, you know, she passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, she told that story in when she had fallen asleep uh, oh, yeah. on her hand. <laughs> Some of you guys remember that story? And she fell asleep, but when she woke up, she saw that hand, right? <laughs> but it had fallen asleep, so she didn't feel it, and she thought it was somebody reaching for her. <laughs> Anyway, I don't even know how she had her hand, honestly. I just know she reached and grabbed the other hand and pulled herself off the couch. It was one of those kind of deals. It's really important to understand what it is that you're afraid of. We had, um, we had one of your, don't mess with my grandma. She should even beat herself up. Wait. <laughs> anyway, we had one of those Iron Man uh, cutouts. Melissa, you may remember oh, this, right? Yeah, yeah. It was just when the movies were kind of big, the early movies from Iron Man, and there was somehow we had, I don't know where we got it, but it was a cardboard cutout of uh, Iron Man, and Molly, our dog. <laughs> was just trotting by one time. Melissa just set the thing out. She's right, <laughs> just barking, barking, barking. <laughs> and this is a little dog that's not fierce at all. But yeah, but, but she's like, no, no, it's just thin. And she folded it over and she still growled and still growled until finally she was convinced. Yeah, okay. And then she kind of pranced off like she had done something, well, right? She would still go into my room, walk over, look at it, bark once, and then walk over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we need to put our fears into perspective. And we can do that by looking at what it is that we are afraid of. Uh, that's a good question to ask. What is it that I am fearful about? What am I anxious about? What is this uncertainty doing to me? And what is it that am I actually uncertain about? And the truth is we actually do live in a very scary world that is all kinds of full of uncertainty. I mean, on the big scale, I mean, all we got to do is flip on the news or uh, go online and just see what's happening in the world and, you know, then go take something for your stomach after that because there's all kinds of turmoil and weird things happening in the world. War in the Middle East, right? Uh, that's always kind of a creepy thing. We got war with Ukraine and uh, Russia going on. We have threats of war with North Korea. North Korea, and even kind of hints of something maybe out there stirring with China. Well, I'm no conspiracy theorist or anything, but all I know is it is a shaky, scary world out there. And on top of that, it's an election year, right? So who knows what's going to happen in that? And of course, you guys all know I absolutely hate election years in the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, if you would like to hear a little of my perspective of how Christians should respond uh, during those uh, election years, there's a post out there on Ministry Back backpack.com uh, that I'll place a link to later and you can see what my thoughts are on that. So that's all I'm saying about that because I hate these years. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> there are certainly a number of things for us all to be concerned about. But as we examine the events and all of those potential threats and those possibilities in our world today, we can examine it uh, by putting it all into perspective. Now you might say, yes, 
I kind of have a good handle on all that big picture stuff. I, I'm okay, but on a personal level, you may have some financial uncertainty happening in your world. You might have some relationship uncertainty. Maybe things are a little shaky with your relationships or they're non-existent and you're wondering what, what's happened to all the people around me. Or maybe there's some family uncertainty or health uncertainty or planning uncertainty. There's, just, you name the category on a personal level or on a big scale, all of us from day to day have a level of uncertainty. So we want to put it in perspective. Fear and uncertainty in this world, and here's the first thing that can be a comfort perhaps to you as we try to put our fear into perspective, our uncertainty in perspective, is that fear and uncertainty is not a new thing. It's not a new thing, okay? This hasn't just happened to you. This isn't just happening now to me at this point in history. It isn't new. In fact, it's been a scary world for a very, very long time. In fact, we can all go back in the Bible and go back in history, back to the beginning even, and we can see that it got scary even in the Garden of Eden. Yes, a scary garden it was. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, And he said to the man, this was God talking to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground since you were taken from it. For you are dust and you will return to dust. Can you imagine God saying those words to you? I can only imagine what that must have felt like for uh, Adam and Eve. Sin entered the world in that moment and all the terrors and the curse of sin came with it. Thus beginning throughout history an, ele an element of fear an element of uncertainty. It was scary, of course, in the days of Noah. You may recall, or maybe you're familiar with the days of Noah. Uh, you may have heard all about the ark and the rainbow and God's promise to not destroy the world again. But in Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, we see, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with wickedness. And God saw how corrupt the earth was, for every creature had corrupted its way on the earth. Then God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to every creature, for the earth is filled with wickedness because of them. Therefore, I'm going to destroy them along with the earth. It was scary and uncertain, obviously, in the days of Noah. And there were scary, uncertain times all throughout Scripture. In the days of Moses, there were cruel leaders who were killing children. In the days of David, there were murderous Philistines, or Philistines, however you want to say it. I just got to remember to pick one and stick with it the whole time, right? Uh, Philistines is what I've, been, I've called them, but Philistines, you may say. But there were murderous people all through David's time. And in the days of Jesus, of course, there was all kinds of political unrest with the Romans. <laughs> and uh, with Israel and insane power-hungry kings in the days of the early church. Of course, there was persecution, there was torture, there was death to believers. We read about some of that persecution and uncertainty that was facing the Thessalonians recently. It was a scary, uncertain world from the Garden of Eden until the time of Christ, and it's been a scary world ever since. So the first thing that we can uh, think about today and understand about this is that it isn't new. <laughs> this isn't it. Maybe there's some comfort at least in that, right? Knowing that there have been generations of people, generations of people who place their faith in Jesus and have followed him through very, very uncertain times. And I will tell you that when things get really crazy, it is a comfort to me to know that there are believers who've died, gone on before us, who faced those same kinds of things, and yet they thrived, and they had strength, and they had comfort from the Lord, and they were able to make it through those times. So, comfort in that. But as we examine our fear and the terrifying times in which we live, we also need to be aware of something else, and that is simply this, and I believe that most of you all know this and understand it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. God is bigger than and sovereign over this scary world. Now, a lot of people misunderstand the word sovereign, but basically what I mean as I'm saying sovereign here is that he has set parameters around this sinful, scary world that we are in, that he doesn't allow anything to go past, right? He still is moving history towards its conclusion. He still is the alpha, the beginning, 
and the omega, the ending. He still has it all in his view. So whatever you're facing today, whatever kinds of things you are uncertain about, he has it within his view and he has a plan and he's in control. Psalms chapter 145 verses 1 through 6 simply say this, I exalt you, my God, the King, and bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you every day. I will praise your name forever and ever. Now listen to this. The Lord is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your splendor and glorious majesty and your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts that I will declare your greatness. Now, generally speaking, the size of our fear is proportionate to the size of our perception of God. Let me tell you this again. Often our fear is proportionate to the size of how we see and understand how big God is. And usually our God in our heart is too small. Because what happens is, as followers of Christ, we know and we understand that God is bigger than all of those things. He's scarier even than all of the scariest things on this world. More powerful than all of those. And when we face uncertain times, how we react. Are we thinking the future and what I'm uncertain about is more scary, more powerful than the God I place my faith in today? So no one can fathom, Scripture says, how great the Lord truly is. He's infinite. He is powerful. He is big. He is a rock you can fall upon today and find a sure foundation. Uh, the Scripture continues, or rather says in Isaiah chapter 40, 12, we find that God is greater than even nature itself. It says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand or marked out the heavens with the span of his hand? Who has gathered the dust of the earth in a measure or weighed the mountains on a balance and the hills on the scales. So in this one uh, little passage here, verse 12 of Isaiah chapter 40, we're seeing God's greater than all of the seas and all of the oceans. I mean, how much water can you hold in your hand? <laughs> I mean, I, not much, right? And God's describing the oceans. He's, he's got it. He's got the wild raging oceans under control and in his hand by contrast. Uh, we see. And then greater than even the heavens, the skies, we see that that is there. Uh, we see these greater than the powerful mountains. Uh, God is bigger than all of those things, and He can deal with the entire universe like we, you and I might deal with the smallest of things. And we forget that God is, uh, it's easy to forget, I should say, just how powerful and strong and mighty God is. Now, and then the obvious things that come up and what people say, well, God's so powerful. Why is there so much bad in the world, right? Well, that's why we started but back in Genesis, <laughs> right? We saw that sin has wreaked havoc and the ability that God has given us to obey him or not obey him, to the freedom he has given us to follow him or not to follow him has uh, pro created all kinds of cracks in our world and cause problems even relationally and all through the global scope of all humanity. And all those things happen. Even nature itself is cursed, as we saw, that the ground itself was cursed because of sin. That's right. A spiritual reality affected a physical reality. And so that very God who is in control of all of that, he did something about that sin problem and all of the things that we have. Now, if we had said, well, uh, God can't make me serve him, well, well, he could. <laughs> He's chosen not to, right? He can make you serve him, and guess what? There wouldn't be any of those horrible things in the world, <laughs> right? And he just made us, boop, yes, God, you are, right? <laughs> he doesn't do that. He loves you as you are. He will meet you at where you are, but he wants to deal with that sin problem. Anyway, he's greater than nature, uh, than nature uh, and he's greater than the mountains. We see in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 15 through 18, look, the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are considered as a speck of dust on the scales. He lifts up the islands like fine dust. Lebanon cedars are not enough for fuel or its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are considered by him as empty nothingness. With whom will you compare God? What likeness will you set up for comparison with him? 
I would just think about that for a minute. To God, the nations on the earth are like a drop in the bucket. You know, I get nervous sometimes when I'm looking at the news. And I'm seeing, you know, man, what is going to happen? Is this World War III we're getting into? Someone said the other day, kind of freaked me out. I said, no, uh, one person said, uh, we are at the beginnings of, of, of possibly the start of World War III. And then so the response was, actually, no, World War III has already begun. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and that's freaky, man. But when you begin to understand that even throughout history, there is going to still going to be some hard, there are going to be uh, wars and rumors of wars until the Lord returns. But he is still, he has still placed some boundaries in place because he is bigger than the nations. And anyone who would exalt themselves above the ways of God uh, will look like the ultimate speck of a fool before him one day. But we don't need to be afraid. We need to be strong during those times. But he is greater than the nations. In the comparison to God, the nations are like nothing. Uh, then it says he's infinitely greater than even the rulers. In uh, verses 23 through 24 of Isaiah 40, he reduces princes to nothing. He makes judges of the earth like a wasteland. They are barely planted, barely sown. Their stern, uh, stern hardly takes root in the ground. When he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind carries them away like stubble. So think about this. All the famous leaders of all time, from Alexander the Great to Hitler, it, not a great leader, but he was a, a horrifying leader, but whoever. The scary, the small, the great of all the famous rulers and people we've heard of all through time, they ultimately faded. Not just because they ultimately died, but they faded before this sovereign God. We could go on and on and on about that. So he's greater than nature, he's greater than nations, he's greater than rulers. It's important for us to understand and to examine what we're afraid of in the light of the greatness of God and see how it compares. Now, I know you say, wait, is there never a time to be afraid of anything? Well, yes, there's, there's a wisdom uh, in having fear, but our first real fear should be of the one who is the most powerful of all, right? And recognizing his greatness and his power. So, uh, to wrap up with this here today, uh, it's just to give us all a, a foundational strength of knowing whatever is to come, whatever we're uncertain about, we can trust in this powerful but loving God. So I would throw in one last thing here before we go today, and that is that when we are facing uncertain times, just in, again in way of an introductory uh, uh, sermon to this series, uh, we need to share our fear. Don't just examine it. Don't just look at it and put it in perspective. But we need to share our fear. Now, this doesn't mean create a tidal wave of fear to everybody you know. I'm not talking about freaking everybody out and spreading, you know, panic in the streets. That's not the kind of share I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about a fear about the terror and uncertainties around us should first be shared with God Himself. Okay. So the big God I was just talking about is not so big and scary that He's not close enough to receive you and to hear you, and to love you, and care about you. He's the one you want on your side during the uncertain times. So first share that fear with God. And we're going to talk more about that one later, but just quickly, a couple of passages here. Psalm chapter 56, verses 3 through 4. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Some of the uh, shakiest decisions and times in my life are when I considered what mortals, humans, could do to me more than what God would ask of me. And that's when I got off track. And maybe the truth is uh, the same for you. But when you were afraid and when you're facing uncertainty, take it to Him. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6-7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, Catch the, don't pass by that first phrase, humble yourselves. It's when we don't go to God, we are being arrogant, right? We are considering ourselves better at dealing with these things than God himself. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. So those, those two concepts there together, right? Go to him, his mighty hand, so that he may exalt you at the proper time. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, too. Casting all your cares on him because he cares about you. All your cares? All your cares. You're worried about money? Cast it on the Lord. You're worried about what's happening and what decision to make it work? Cast it on the Lord. You're worried about your, your relationships, your, your marriage, your family? 
Cast it on the Lord. He is big enough, as we've just described, to handle it. He's big enough to dwarf the whole universe. Small enough to call you by name and enter your heart today. He's that kind of big. It's that kind of big. So not only should you share those fears with God, but I also suggest as we get ready to go here today that we should share those fears uh, with others. Our fears should also be shared, not just with God, but with those around us. Galatians 6.2 says, Carry one another's burdens. If you are dealing with uncertainty, you're not sure what you need to do, and it is beginning to wreak a little havoc in your life, that is a burden. All right? And Scripture tells us, carry one another's burdens. In this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the law of love. His great love for us displayed. We love each other when we help each other through difficult times. When you're uncertain, when you're not sure, share it with somebody, and they can pray with you, they can encourage you, they can help you. And that's what we want our church to be all about. And lastly, I would just simply say, throw a verse of Scripture Maybe not throw. Claim a verse of the scripture. <laughs> throw over. Throw a Bible at somebody. <laughs> no, no. My work. <laughs> My work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of this dog. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, I would say claim a verse of scripture uh, for your fear, for your anxiety, and for your uncertainty. And you might say, but I don't know that. Well, you can find those very easily using the Bible app and others. You can search. Uh, for these, you can search uncertainty, you can search uh, uh, you know, anxiety, you can search worry, you can search fear, and you'll get all kinds of offers, uh, offers for, uh, from Scripture that could be a verse you might could claim during this time. Uh, I uh, remember uh, Leona once while I was away for, on a trip, I was gone for at least a week or so, and she was home with their little kids, and she was a little bit nervous about that, and at night she was hearing things and getting kind of... Sketchy. In fact, even one of those times, there was somebody who lived in the apartment below us, and they had their music just kind of thumping really loud. If you've ever lived in an apartment, you know how this goes from time to time, right? Well, these are these guys who had like Satan shirts on and stuff, and they, they were like really into some heavy metal. They were partying pretty crazy, and just boom, 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 boom. And uh, anyway, I think she either asked them to turn it, if they could turn it down because their babies were asleep. Well, they got mad. They started harassing her. They were trying to you know, climb up onto the balcony and stuff, and it was just a creepy time. Well, uh, I could probably tell you more That's about when you throw the Bible out. That's when you throw the Bible Sword of the Lord. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I can't remember if she called the police or, or what. I can't remember. It was a while back. But anyhow, uh, so there were other times when I was away, and uh, she was nervous. So she found this passage of Scripture that she sort of claimed this as she was going to sleep at night, and she taught it to our kids as well. But it's Proverbs 3, verses 24, all the way through 26. 24 in particular, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will lie down, and your sleep will be pleasant. Did you know that was in the Bible? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is because you're trusting in the strong, powerful God. Uh, don't fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. Listen, there are very real dangers and things that we need to be very well aware of and prepared for uh, and all of those things, but it doesn't need to grip us and, and, and take us, make us shiver to the depths of our soul uh, with either indecision or with fear when we're facing it because we serve a God who is bigger than all of that. Well, let's respond to him now. Let's pray together. Uh, if you're here this morning and you never placed your faith into this Jesus, you've never even considered Jesus as being strong, you've always thought of him as maybe a weak type of character, uh, but you're listening today, you're online today, and you're hearing me speak, uh, and you uh, are, are realizing you need a relationship with this God. You want him on your side. You want to, to know him. Well, you can place your faith in him this morning, right now. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages, or what we earn from our sin, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you are that whosoever today. You can place your faith in Him right now. Just pray with me right now. Jesus, today I realize and I confess I am a sinner and I need You. I believe on You right now, Lord, to save me. I don't understand all of this, but I, I believe that You died on a cross for me 
You rose from the dead. You made it possible for me to have forgiveness, to have new life this morning. So Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. Remove the darkness and give me your light. God, give me uh, a sense of your presence in my heart and just make me a new person today. I'm turning from my sinfulness and I'm giving my heart to you right now. Help me to follow you with all that I am. From this day forward, please save me right now. Followers of Jesus, maybe you can pray this with me. Lord, I pray you'd help me to draw close to you this week so that I sense and know your presence and your strength and your power through whatever I'm facing. And Lord, as I uh, go through this week with any of the uncertain things that are coming before me, any of the fears that begin to creep up, Lord, I just want to cast those fears and anxieties on you. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you are with us this morning. And we pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty then. So that's just the intro. So <laughs> we... <laughs> Uh, it's going to be fun the uh, next, next few weeks. I'm going to try to give you some very practical kind of things. This is a little bit more of a, just sort of foundational ideas that I think I would have regretted us not at least uh, introducing that idea that God is bigger than the boogeyman, right? <laughs> As uh, Veggie Tales told us all those years ago. <laughs>